Hey there, if you're just joining us on Facebook, come on in. We are gonna do some coloring tonight. And we are gonna be coloring with lots of different colors, lots of different varieties. Okay, I'm just getting things set here, make sure I have everybody. And we are recording, so welcome, welcome, welcome. First thing I wanna talk about is there are some varieties of ways to color. Stampin' Up! offers three. And you're saying, okay, there's the watercolor pencil. Yep, I heard about that one. And then there are the markers. Yep, I heard about those. What do you mean three? Wait, Stampin' Up! has brand new releasing November 1st. That's only less than two weeks away brand new alcohol markers. They're called Stampin' Blends. And we're gonna work with those tonight too. They come in sets of, let me make sure I get this right. They come in, you can buy a light, a dark, or a combo pack. So if you just wanna buy one, it's 450. Two is $9. That's pretty easy to remember. And you'll notice if you look on the side, they come in. This is light Calypso Coral, and this is dark Calypso Coral. Okay? There are 12 colors. There is also a blender. Now, if you're from Copic World, you remember we had a blender pen. Yeah, the blender pen is really useful. And if you're going to be doing stamps like what we're doing tonight, you're going to want, they have an ivory and a bronze that work for skin tones. This is the ivory. This the bronze. I'm still getting used to which ones they are yet. No, that's like crumb cake. I have, um, they're recommended to be stored horizontally. And Stampin' Storage, the wooden containers that I have all my stuff stored in, they have a new set just for these markers. So let me get in here. I'm trying to get to where the bronze is. Let me do it this way. So I, right now I have them at a dollar store dollar basket, but they'll be much easier to find if you don't have to dump them all out every time you want to find something. So these are the two, let me make sure. These are the two skin tones, ivory and bronze, and then the blender. Those are three that are not sold in lighter darks. Oh, Dolly, you are here. Welcome, welcome. Um, those of you that are, are just coming in, Dolly had asked me to answer a few questions about how to get a good clean stamp. And you'll notice if you missed it, on the blog today, I posted a video, a short video that I did earlier today to help people kind of get it. Because Dolly's question is asked by a lot. Um, it just happens to be that she asked me today if I could explain this so she could explain it to other people. And one of the things that you want to remember, it's seriously, practice, practice, practice. So let's work on getting our images set and then we can color. So what I've got set up is a lot of stuff. <laughs> um, two kinds of inks that you're going to want to know. If you are using the watercolor, you're gonna to wanna to use the basic gray archival stamp pad or the black archival, which I'm staring at, I'm sure. The basic black, but archival, okay? Those two work really, really well with your watercolor pencils. Memento is the ink that you're gonna to wanna to use if you're using the alcohol-based stamp and blends, okay? So that will be something that you will need to add to your addition, add to your inks if you're going to be using the alcohol stamp and blends. Remember, these are not available till November 1st. There will be a class kit or two that features some of these. So those of you that like to do it that way, that's a good way to start gathering and building your sets. So what are you going to stamp on? If you're going to be using watercolor or markers, you can use Whisper White. Stampin' Blend likes Whisper White thick. 
If you are using watercolor, you can also use the watercolor paper. All right, so let's get a couple options going here. The stamp set that we are using is Christmas in the Making. And truthfully, if you are just getting started with an alcohol blend, faces and hair are not the easiest things to color. So I wouldn't recommend those as your first jump in. We'll use some others, but this class was already planned and I wasn't sure that I would be able to tell you about these guys yet. So we will do them. We will, I will show you how they work. That's why we have the ivory and the bronze in the blender to get our, our skin tones, but they're a little trickier. We're gonna do those last. First, we're gonna do watercolor, which in my opinion are the easiest ones and the most satisfying to work with. Uh, I lost my picture I did. So here's my watercolor. Oh, here it is. Under all these guys. Here's two that I did earlier today. This is the watercolor, which I love, love, love that look. Markers is not, I'm not a big a fan, as big a fan. It is definitely skill, and I don't have a marker skill. I'm just not that that good at it. It again, it's one of those practice makes perfect. And I just don't seem to, I love doing this. This is very satisfying for me. For me, this one's a little trickier. I have to work a little bit harder, but we're gonna work on them. We're gonna do it because you might wanna know how to do either one. Okay. So first things first, we're gonna do the watercolor. And I'm gonna stamp that with, I like using the archival gray because my lines aren't as distinct after I stamp. And I'm gonna use from here, I'm gonna stamp the one with the kitty, this one, where she's sitting down opening a present. Remember when you take your stamp out, it when you first get these, let's talk about the two different kinds of stamps too. This is called a clear mount stamp. A clear mount stamp is anything but clear, right? So when you first get it and you take it out and look at it and you're thinking, I got the wrong thing. I ordered clear mount, how did I get this? Because it's mounting on a clear block. They also come in wood mount, and those come in a traditional wooden mount, the way that you're used to seeing stamps since you were a little girl. Stampin' Up! offers two. The reason I like these is they come in this size storage case, and I don't, I can have more stamps on my shelf. If you are more of a traditionalist and you want them, they will come with a wooden block and you put them on just like you're used to and you can do that. Now there's also photopolymer stamps and those are clear, all the way clear through. They have to be handled just a little bit differently. Both of them do. But let's do, we'll stamp each one. So let's say we're gonna do this lady and we're doing her and we're gonna do watercolor. So I'm gonna stamp on here and I'm gonna look at it. Do you have good ink? Look at that closely and you can see that I don't have good ink. Sorry, my hand's shaking a little. Let me get it still. See like the cat's feet and the girl's feet are pretty good, but those pants are kind of sketchy. Goodness, what is wrong with my shaky? Let's zoom in. Okay, so I need some more ink. And then I'm getting better, a little more ink. This tells me that this ink pad might need to be re-inked too. That can sometimes be a challenge if your ink pad, and I use this base, this archival gray a lot. So I might need to re-ink you, but for right now, now, this is the red clear mount, and notice there's foam built into it versus this one that has no foam. So if I'm using this one, I just want to use my smooth surface, which in this case, I have a piece of marble that I use because my countertop is tile. And I'm gonna do solid, steady pressure. No rocking. And you can see that I have a nice, even stamp. 
right? Now, what if I were to, let's do that same kind of thing, and I really want to make sure I'm getting some ink, so I'm really pushing down. And notice when I do that, I tend to get some ink around the edge of my stamp. Not really what I wanted. And if I, in turn, come over here and I'm just as forceful and I'm really pushing down, I'm going to get that same kind of boo-boo. Okay? So, a gentle touch. It isn't so much how hard you press as much as it is that you have good, solid ink coverage. Now, I've still got the same boo-boos around the edge, but if it's just a nice, even touch, I don't get the boo-boos on the edge. Okay? All right. Another question was, how do you get your stamps clean? I will tell you that the red stamps, the clear mounts, are easier to clean and less likely to stain. If You'll notice that my photopolymers are stained because I've used a black ink on it and it looks a little pinky color. It doesn't affect the stamping ability. It's still going to stamp fine, but it's not as pretty looking and it's definitely used. If that's going to bug you, the first time you stamp, if you grab the Versamark clear ink and you ink up your stamp with this first, and then go ahead and use a black or a red or melon mambo or real red, your stamp will be less likely to stain because the Versamark sort of coats it. When you're done, you're going to want to use your Stampin' Scrub. So you take your Stampin' Mist. It's a wet and a dry. So wet over here. Clean on the wet and dry on the dry. And then you can see that your stamp looks virtually brand new. Now, remember I said I was using the archival on the watercolor paper, which is right here, so I could use my watercolors. I will tell you that this is Whisper White, and I used my watercolor here. But if you get really close, you can see where I kind of balled up the paper a little bit here. You can also see my nails need some attention. <laughs> You'll see that. That's what happens on your Whisper White. If you're using your watercolor paper, you won't get that. So this girl's gonna get done on watercolor paper so we can see that. We'll stamp some other things in a minute. We have a clean stamp. This is on Whisper White. This is on watercolor, okay? Same, I use the same gray ink on both. And the watercolor pencils, let me get these guys out. Some of the things I like to add to my watercolors are my Wink of Stella Clear. You're going to want a blender pen. They come three in a pack. They come like this. And there's three double-tipped blender pens, and I'll show you what we do with those in a minute. I often will use my black journaling pen or oh, my Cricut. Um, what else do I want? I guess that's all I have. You can also use the little chalk white if you need to add a little dot in the eye of to add a highlight. All right, so move these guys out of the way. Now, I haven't colored her yet, so I don't know exactly what she's going to be, but we're going to start with, I'm going to start with a cat, and it's going to be an orange tabby. And we're just going to start. The beauty of the watercolor, I can't talk in color either. The beauty of the watercolors is you just have to lay down a little. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit to get this closer for you. Sorry, it'll stop shaking again in a second. You just have to, so you don't really color in the whole thing. You're going to lay a little bit of color down. And you're going to think about where the shadows are. 
So now under the cat's neck is going to be a little bit darker. Under the cat's armpits down in here is going to be a little darker. Under the belly, the side of the ear. And the stamps sometimes help you with that. Then when you take the blender, this is the magic part. And when you work with this, it just brings all those colors together and you don't see the lines anymore. The blender pen is like this magical tool. And now when you get done with this, Hold on. And so you can just kind of drag it over a little. The watercolor is very forgiving. The skills that you're using in watercolor coloring are the same skills you're going to use in, um, um, in your alcohol paints too. The skills that you're using. And you just wipe this off and it comes clear and you're just wipe it off. I'm trying to get so you can see it. I realize I'm too far out. Even though it's stained, it's not coming off. See, it rubs clear and I can put it away. Blender pens last a really, really long time. And now my cat's going to get, um, you just sharpen these with a regular pencil sharpener. Yes, the dog chewed this pencil. You can see the teeth marks. That is not me. That is a Shih Tzu. Uh, let's give her, we're going to give her red shoes. Right? And then we're going to do her pants the same way. And you can do the same kind of thing. You can kind of highlight your the wrinkles if you want. But what's nice about this is there's no bleeding. It doesn't, it doesn't ooze out. So you don't have to worry that, oh, I got too close to the edge. Now what am I gonna do? Learning your coloring skills with watercolor pencils is perfect. It's the easiest way to learn how to color because it's really forgiving. How do you get the highlights in there? You have a white one and the blender pen. So now you take the blender pen and again, you're going to go. But what's different about this is I can get this really great look, but it's still watercolor. You know, I don't get a really deep, vibrant color that we're going to get with the markers. Okay. And see how easy that is to blend that in. It's really amazing what this blender pen does. It changes the whole world. And it's super, super easy to work with. To get your skin tone is a little trickier because we don't really have a skin tone. So what I like to use is to take a little bit of Calypso Coral, really little bit, and a little bit of the early espresso, again, a very little bit. So I'm going to do just like a line down the middle, really light. And then the same thing with the Calypso Coral, again, just a line. I just want some color in there. And then my blender pen is going to do the rest. See how that just adds that, brings that color. And then you get kind of a skin tone, my skin tone. If you need a little bit darker, then you use a little bit more early espresso. You could, if you don't want any color at all. Now, if you take this pen, this blender pen, while it's still got some of this color, and kind of go in here, you can get a little, you don't really get a lot. Another way to pick up color is to lay it down over here. Whoops, I'm out too far. Let me come out. Lay down your color over here and then pick it up with a blender pen. See it get on the tip of the blender pen. 
And then I'm going to put it in her hair because I don't want it to be too dark here. But you can see where I'm laying it down just ever so lightly. And that allows me to control the amount of color that I get. Okay? So, blender pen magic. It truly is. Love the blender pen. Now, maybe I want to add a little something to the cat on top just to kind of tone down the orange a little. Just pick up a little bit more. This is early espresso. And just kind of go over the cat a little bit. The watercolor paper is good. If I try and do this on Whisper White a little too much, it will ball up on me. If I'm rubbing on it, the paper tends to kind of come apart. Okay? All right, so watercolor, incredibly forgiving. And see, I just keep wiping until my pen is clear, and I'm good to go, and I'm ready to go the next time. So if this is, if this is a color that you like, you're going to want. If you like this look, remember it's this lady, you're going to want, I recommend the basic gray because my lines are a little less, less stark. You can also use, you can use the archival black, same thing. I like the archival basic gray. You're going to want your watercolor pencils and you're going to want your set of blender pens. They come three. You're also gonna want a pack of watercolor paper. It comes in six by nines. I should know, I think there's 10 in a pack. And you will get a lot done with them. What I recommend if you're a watercolor fiend or you think you might wanna be, get yourself some blank pieces. I knew I did that, sorry. Let me go grab one. You're going to get a blank case, the stamp case. They look like this. Goodness, my chair. <laughs> I, I don't even want to tell you what happened. <laughs> my chair is a, is, a, is a desk chair, and it goes up and down when I get up. Well, the arm of the chair was under my table, so it lifted up the table. Yeah, anyway, it was a bad idea. Get yourself one of these. I won't get up again. Get yourself one of these, and you will notice that what's cool about this is all the pencils fit in here. So you have this really great little coloring case, all your pencils, your blender pen, some images that you've stamped, and you now have a coloring kit that you're ready to go with, right? Throw this in your bag, and the next time you're sitting at the doctor's office or you're sitting in line or you're waiting to pick somebody up after school, you've got something to work on because you can simply take this out and you can color right on top of this. So, love my watercolor kit. I use it a lot. I like this look. Now, let's go to the next look. This is markers. Truthfully, I'm not very good at markers, but I will show you it to you anyway. <laughs> um, I put my marker girl in here. So again, this is a skill. This takes time. You need to practice it. You don't just sit down and start doing really well with it. I kept out the colors that I used on this lady so that we would know for sure. And again, skin tone is really tough. So if you're not comfortable with markers, mark these markers, these come in um, pairs. They come in different sets of colors. They also come in a full set with room for more. And they're always adding new colors when they add the new in colors of the year, they will add a marker. These coordinate with all of Stampin' Up! cardstock and ink pads. So what's nice about that is you know if you're using, for example, the Real Red, it's going to match Real Red ink. It's going to match Real Red cardstock so that you don't have to worry that it's going to be off just a little. Now remember, when you're doing the watercolors, 
it's going to be a watercolor. You know, it's not going to be a really deep, brilliant color. It's going to be watercolor. It's going to be a little muted. All right, so let's see if we can do something similar that we did in the watercolors so we can see what it looks like in the markers. So we want kind of an orangey color for our kitty. So I don't have one of those out. Let's grab. This is Peekaboo Peach, and this is Pumpkin Pie. The markers come in two ends. There's a fine point that's a 0.5 millimeter, and then there's a brush tip. So that's, this is for small areas. This is for larger. So let's try and do our kitty. I'm doing the pumpkin pie. And the blender pen does work with the markers. And the markers are cool. You just tend to get more of a line with them. You can kind of blend it in. We're going to do that. Let's color our kitty. When I do the markers, I tend to outline it a little bit with the fine point and do the tiny images. And then I'll come back and use the brush. To get a more realistic look when you're doing fur or hair, oh, sorry. If you use this end, and rather than just paint on it, if you flick it away, you will get a more realistic look than if you just scrub it. Now you can see that I get a totally different look on my cat than I did with the watercolor, right? It's much more vibrant. To get the shading that I want, like I want this a little darker, I just keep going back over it. Watch out for the eyeballs. Uh, you, I'm kind of holding my breath doing this. <laughs> okay, there's our kitty. Now I'm going to come in with my red. If you look at the marker, you will see there's a thin line here. I'm a little too zoomed in. It's kind of happy medium here. There is a thin line here, and there's a thick line here. So I can tell which end is what. I've also got pictures, depending on your eyesight, how good you can see. Uh, I'm going to go with a thin line, and I'm going to get the nose in. And then I want a little bit of color in his ears. And then I'm going to take my blender. And I'm going to kind of blend it so it's not quite so harsh. All right. Cat's ears. Now, I can do the same kind of thing about picking up color with my marker and my blender pen. So if I put my marker here and I pick it up with my blender pen, I can use the blender pen to do some of the detail that I want a little bit lighter than the marker. Okay. Let's see. I want this on her hair bow. And you can see that that's a little paler than, and again, just keep rubbing till it comes clean and you're set to go with another one. It might stain it a little, but it doesn't change its color. So now what if I said, well, that's not deep enough. I need a little bit more red. I can bring in the actual marker. Okay. Now for hair, all of our, our hair is not one solid color. It's a couple different colors. And because we have, I have the whole set of markers, I can pick and choose. So, I suggest that you go lighter than you think you want because it's going to end up darker. This is crumb cake and this is soft suede. 
I'm going to start with crumb cake and I'm going to use the thin point and I'm going to try and get just some lines in the hair. Okay. Then I'm going to go with the next one. This is soft suede. And I'm going to do the same thing, but you can see that it's darker, but I'm not going to go over the light. I'm going to kind of mix them in. And then I'm going to take my early espresso and add that. So I get almost like highlights in the hair. And hair isn't like one solid thing. It's, it's pieces of hair. So you want to kind of dab at it a little rather than overall color like you would the cat. And then you can take the blender and you can kind of blend them together a little, make them a little more realistic. Okay. So that's what the markers can do. Oh, let's do the sweater. Let's give her, um, this is Old Olive. And we're going to do her sweater. I'm using the, the, um, the brush end. And you can see, and I'll show you when we get to the Stampin' Blends, how we don't have these lines. I can kind of come in with a blender and get rid of them a little bit, but um, this is one of the negatives to markers is that you have lines if you're doing a really big solid area. And it's tough to get a lot of definition with it at least at my skill level. If you look online, you'll see some people are incredible marker artists and they do a lot with um, the flick of the, of the marker. It's not really coloring, it's more of texturing. It's kind of like um, the way oil painters do and they lay down paint in different layers. It's kind of like that, it's not me. I tend to just keep making it darker. So now if you don't like that and you want to kind of blend it a little more, bring in your blending pen and you can kind of get a better look with it. Part of the problem I find is with the marker, you don't really see the detail of the stamp as well. Okay. Now I guarantee someone's going to watch this video and say, no, 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 we like markers better and we can do them better this way. And if honestly, if you are happy with the markers and you get the looks that you want, then by all means, keep doing it. Don't, don't not do it just because it isn't my favorite. I try and show you everything, not necessarily my favorite. Some things I'm happier with than others. Some colors are not my choice, but I want you to see it all. Okay. And now let's see what the Stampin' Blends can do so that you can kind of see, well, which ones work best for me. You're going to want to put something down under them. Alcohol markers have, mass, have much more saturation with color, which means it will ooze through the paper and end up coming through. And that's really what you want. You, you want to see the color on the back. so that you can tell that's what your alcohol markers will look like on the back. I kept some of my boo-boos from earlier and I will show you those in a few minutes. Um, okay, so first thing we need to do is, is stamp our, our image. And there's two that I wanna show you with, but first we're gonna use this lady again. Only this time we have to put her with Memento because that is the ink that works with alcohol markers. And again, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to make sure that you have good coverage. Make sure that your black is really smooth. And then again, a nice even pressure, not crazy, just nice. 
and you've got a really great stamped image to start with. You want to make sure it's good and dry, so give it a second or two. And then decide what you're going to go with. Now remember, I said that faces and skin are not the first thing that I recommend that you start with. Those are a little trickier to get, but you know, hey, that's what we got. So <laughs> we're going to go. We have two to work with. I'm going to do the ivory because that's closer to me. And I'm going to start with that because if I mess it up, I can always stamp again and start again. And the face is the one I'm going to be most likely to mess up because it's just tough. These two come in the same kind of double ended markers. The thin end gives you. <laughs> Apparently I'm having a hard time today. The thin end gives you the more bullet point. This end gives you the more pen, the more brushy end. There's a technical word for those. These caps can stack so you don't lose it while you're working on it. I dropped one in the trash today. Don't do that. Uh, you want to be sure that you cover them up as soon as you're done working with them. If you've ever worked with Spectrum Noir markers or Copics, those are alcohol-based markers. I have taught Copic, but it's been many years since I did. These are simpler to use, way simpler to use than Copic, because you don't have as many color variations. So you don't have to worry, do I have YZ, YR 157 and YR 153? Which one do I, you don't have to worry about that. You can start with either light or dark. It doesn't matter. In the, in the skin tones, you just have a bronze and an ivory. So as we go, we'll do more with those. But for tonight, I just want to get some color down. So I'm going to start. And the number one thing you want to think about when you're coloring is where are my shadows going to be? Well, that's decided by where the light is coming from. I'm going to like to think that the light is coming from this side. She's looking like the room would be darker over here. Depending on how I set my scene up, I'm going to assume that my light, you get to do that. You're the artist. You can decide where the light's coming from. So the light's coming from here. Let's use this to facilitate, to assume that this is the light. If that's the case, this part of her face is going to be lighter. This is going to cast some shadows down here, right? So this cheekbone is the lightest possible part of her face. That's going to have the least amount of color. It's going to have the most glare, the most shine, the biggest highlight, because that's where the light's coming from. So I'm going to want to work away from that and work over here. So because I have no idea what color this is going to be when I'm first starting with it. I'm going to go where the shadow is and lay it down so I get a sense of what color is. All right. It also will dry a little bit lighter than what you're working with. So I'm going to do her ears and I'm doing really, really light. Not necessarily coloring every inch of her skin. I'm kind of dotting some colors in. I'm then going to take the blender pen, which is this white cap one. And I'm going to blend. And as I do, it also pushes. So I'm going to blend the color away from that part that I said was lighter. And right now it looks a little blotchy. But give it a minute to dry, and it will soak in, and she won't look blotchy. Now I might want to add a little color, because she looks just kind of like she's been to the spray tan. This is light pink pirouette. So just put a little bit of color in. So now I'm going to go back and do the hands. Same kind of thing. I'm not going to do all over it. I'm going to do a little bit down the middle, kind of dot it. It works best if it's wet. 
So you don't want to go on to the next one. You don't want to do it all, which would be easier, and then come back because it will have dried out. So any blending that you want to do, you want to do while it's still wet. Okay. Get her hands the way you like them. And then the feet, the same thing. Just do a little. This one's going to be darker because it's in the back. And then you're going to blend. And you can always go back and put more color down. Okay. So few. To me, that's the hardest part is the skin tone. Then the hair comes next. So I'm going to do that first. So if I mess it up, I can move on. One of the things you want to be careful with is even though you've used Memento, you can smear the facial expressions on something this tiny. So you want to be really careful. You can see it's starting to run just a little bit. It'll dry and it'll be okay, but I probably could have let this dry a little bit more if I wasn't with you guys. So now I have to decide. I'm going to put my skin tones over here so I remember where they are. And what I like to do is line these up so I've got my colors and I know where light and dark are because those are the two I'm going to work with together. So this is light cherry cobbler. And I need dark cherry cobbler because I'm going to want that for her sweater. So those two are going to go there. I'm going to do old olive. Because it's Christmas, she's going to wear green pants. My cat, I think I'm going to make him orange again. I kind of liked that. So that was dark pumpkin pie and light pumpkin pie. So now I can do a little more variation with my cat. I'm going to go in and do the light first with the thin marker. I find it's easier to go light to dark. Some people go dark to light. It's completely up to you. And I'm going to lay down the light, and I'm going to come back over it with the dark. See how it's kind of almost a dot rather than, than a scrub, if that makes sense? I seriously have not played with these a lot. I have, I do have to fess up and say I am Copic certified, so that's not really fair to say I've never done this before. I've never done it with these markers before. And then I'm going to grab my, but it's been a long time. I haven't copic in a while. And then I'm going to get my light one. Now this is the dark pumpkin, but just look at the colors that you can get with these. Now, if you don't like that line, see the line between the colors? That's where the blender comes in. And you just kind of push it a little bit and then let it dry. And you can always come back with the light color. And you can see that they're really, I have shadow, I have darker color, but I don't have a big line that I had on some of the others. Anybody have any questions on these? Do you want me to keep coloring? <laughs> yeah? No? So let's go with our sweater. Same thing. I'm going to start with a light. I'm going to do it both ways. I'm going to start with the light on this one, and I'm going to go over the whole thing. And then I'm going to come in and put my highlights in with the dark one. It does take, this is again, a practice makes perfect. You're not going to sit down and color your very first image and be ecstatic. It's going to take a little bit of doing. So this is not what I would start with. This is a tricky one. There's a, too much detail. 
it's too tiny. I would start with something a little bit bigger and I'll show you a bigger one in a second. The flowers are great to work with. We have a lot of great flower stamps. There is also a stamp set that comes as part of the bundle with the new release. Oh, happy day, I think it is. And you can see where we're getting the shadows, much more depth. I know, no one's saying a word. <laughs> Sandy says no questions. No one's saying anything. Everyone's just like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so I didn't think I was going to get to show you these. So here we come with our green leggings. I love this stamp set. This just takes me back to, it looks like, like Mary Tyler Moore or something. Oh, Rob, right? And then I'm going to take the dark <laughs> and I'm going to add my shadow right here. Now, if I don't like the way the shadow looks, I can come in with the blend. Well, it's not that I don't like it. It's that I don't like the distinction between the two. Come in with the blender and just go over it. This particular blender is pretty wet, I'm noticing. So it, it might bleed a little. Again, practice, practice, practice. But you can see that you get almost a highlight where her knee is. Let's play with the hair. Blonde is really tough to get because blonde isn't really yellow, but we will give it a shot. We're going to use the light yellow and then I'll bring in some maybe, I don't know, we'll see. We will talk about these more as we, as we play more with these, about how to get the blends that you want. I, I'll give you some different mixes. I don't hate that. But I want to tone it down just a little. And the blender comes in. And then my red. Oops, her shoes. What's tough about this, because it is so tiny, it's hard to get a lot of definition because you don't have a lot of space to work in. So it's hard to get your shadows in a tiny, tiny little space, especially when you first get going. So anywho, that's her. But let's say, you know, I just, I need more space. I need more, I need more, I want to work with a little bit more space than what we've got. Let me see who I've got that we can try. Okay, let's use our birds. These are the best birds, and they really are the best birds. I do like these guys a lot. So we did these one other time in another class, and what I recommended is that you look them up and find a bird that you're trying to copy <laughs> if you want it to look a little more realistic. A bunch of paper where are you this is not the whisper white thick this is just regular whisper white oh you want to see the back see that's what's going on my colors are bleeding through the back by having this paper I've they didn't bleed through to it and you want that you want it to bleed through when you're you know that you're getting good saturation of color when that happens Come in, Mr. Birdie. All right, so we're using our memento. Cute. 
I would recommend that you stamp a bunch and then come back. Stamp, let them color, let them dry, then come on back, okay? What if you're trying to do a background? Like you want a little bit of color behind here. What can you do? Well, you can take, I'm going to put down the um, pool party. I don't think so. Did I, Debbie? I think I'm still here. And I'm going to take the thick end and I'm going to just kind of lay down some color. All right. And you're thinking, well, that looks like a five-year-old color. That's not really what I want. Stampin' Up! does have memento, yes. And I need it a little darker under the bird, remember, because that's shadow. And maybe I want... I'm going to take my gray and add that to the under here. To give it a little more ground and then my blend comes in and we're going to work on blending these together notice the two colors are tougher to blend than light and dark and i can come back and maybe i'm going to go with the dark pool party And you can see how that blends a little bit better with the gray, particularly because it was wet. Okay, so there's our background to get that in there. Now we're going to work on our bird. I don't have a picture of what my bird should look like, so I'm going to assume that he is, I'm going to make my bird be red on the top, and kind of rusty brown under here. He's not really cardinal body shape, but he's gonna be a cardinal just because. Or he's gonna be a red bird. So some of the things you're gonna to wanna to do. Start with your dark color. And seriously, you don't have to be fussy. You're just gonna lay color down. In some of the dark areas, this is the dark color. And then I'm going to come in with a lighter color. And then I'm going to blend and kind of bring it up to the top. See how the blending works in there? And as it dries, it'll be okay. And now I'm going to go with the light crumb cake. And I want a little bit of this one, but I don't want a lot of color, just a little. And then I'm going to bring in my blender while everything's still wet. Keep blending. Another way I could have done, I could do that is to lay down some color over here. Same idea. Pick that up with a blender and put that in here. I can also take a little bit off of there. and add a little bit of color right there, okay? So, so many techniques that we're gonna be working on with these little blender babies.
They are available November 1st. And in the meantime, please don't forget my favorite of all time, watercolors. I really do love watercolors. Anybody have any questions about what we did? So let's just go back over what's what. Remember, if you want watercolor, you want archival gray and the watercolors. And I'm looking around because I've lost everything. Here they are. You're going to want archival gray. You're going to want watercolor pencils. And you're going to want the, the blender pens, this blender pen and watercolor paper. And that will give you these looks. If you want markers, you're gonna want the same archival ink, Whisper White cardstock, and your markers. If you're thinking the blenders are for you, you gotta wait till November 1st. The blenders, you're gonna want they come in whatever colors you like, so you can pick and choose and just get one or two. You can buy the entire set. The entire set is what you see here, and that's 121. And that comes with everything, all these colors, including the blender pen and the skin tones. Way less than any Copic collection you've ever seen, and you have them all. You're also going to want thick whisper white and you're going to want memento. Okay. So any questions about how these work, I promise you, I will be doing weekly coloring. Are the blender pens different with watercolors and pens? Yes. The blender pen for the watercolor is this blender pen. The blender pen for the blends, <laughs> these words are too close, looks like this. So Stampin' Blends, which is an alcohol base, has a different blend blender than the blend for watercolor bases. Great question, Jane. That's a good one. Okay. All right. So we will be coloring. I promise, I love watercoloring. I find it incredibly relaxing. I will have to say the stamping blends are not as relaxing just yet, but they will be soon. Um, I love the difference in the look. Remember you can get, oh, where's my girl? I wanted to show you a couple of mistakes. You will see places where people tell you if you happen to color outside the line, you can use a blender pen to try and push it back. That's the kind of look I get. I don't recommend that you do that. I think I'm better off to go with a little boo-boo of coloring outside the line than getting something like that. So let me show you what, hap what that means. Um, that's not it. She's buried under all these markers. Where is she? Oh, here she is. So if you look super close, you'll see this was in a rush and I've got it kind of bled outside the lines a little bit. You want to stop before you get right to the edge. See this cat's blending out a little bit and bleeding. I can hide all that by doing a little bit of background color. I could also fussy cut it off. This is not one I would start with, but you will hear and you will see in a lot of YouTubes, people tell you, oh, this will work. It'll take care of your color. I have not ever found it to push the color away or remove the color completely, particularly if it's a red. You can get away with it a little bit if it's a lighter tone, but I recommend that if you've got a little boo-boo, you live with the boo-boo rather than that. Um, I had a picture of and another one too to show you. It's gone. Let me know. The sketch that I, I have for you for tonight, it's this one. It's a simple layered sketch. We've used it before. And the reason it works really well is it gives you almost a showcase for your work. And it lets you have a smaller thing to, oh, here's my mistake. So I'll, I'll upload this in the blog post with the recording, but it's this simple sketch. 
it starts out with a five and a half by four and a quarter base. That's this one. That's our card. And then you're going to add, this is some old olive that's five and a quarter by four. Then my pattern paper is five by three and three quarters. That's from the Be Merry pack. And then I have my top. This is where my stamping and coloring goes, fits right in here. So you get this really great look. Let me bring her in here. Where now she's she needs more. I'm gonna put a Christmas tree over here. I'm gonna grab something else. I have, or maybe my sentiment will go over there. But do your coloring first. You can always add, let's say you put your sentiment on and it messes up. You can always put a label over it. You can always add a, a something over the top of it to cover that up. But you want to work with your color, your coloring first, because that's going to be the tricky part. And as I said, I start with the face because that's the hardest and most likely to mess up. So if I start with the face first and I mess it up, then I can always do it again. If I got all the way to the end and then did the face and messed it up, I'd be really annoyed. And don't rush. Take your time. Coloring is relaxing. All right, guys, thanks for coming tonight, and I will see you all soon.